Having trouble winning games in Madden 24? <laughs> the answer might be something as simple as a coaching adjustment you're not using. So whether you're struggling on offense, that was easy. Can't get any stops on defense. No, God, please, no, 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 no. This is the video for you. So if you want to see what the best coaching adjustments are to win more games in Madden 24, stick around after the intro. For the fastest, cheapest, and most reliable coins in the market with a no-band guarantee delivery, check out my coin sponsor, MOXP.com, and use discount code MONEYSHOT for 5% off your order. Link in the description below. Welcome back, Money Team. This is Mad Money Shot. Sniff of the Mad Cheese, as always. Got an updated coaching adjustments video for you guys today. I typically put out a full breakdown on coaching adjustments at the beginning of every Madden season, but typically as the game continues on throughout the year, things change in the game. You find that certain coaching adjustments work better. So I try to make update videos about this topic at least once every month or so. So if you guys want to see that, as always, please make sure to be a subscriber. Woo! Hit like button and let me know in the comment section as I do plan on doing this. But if you guys use a different coaching adjustment than me, let me know in the comment section as it's always helpful helpful to have other opinions and other than that let's go let's get right into the video now i'm going to start off on offense and this is going to be a really quick section because there really isn't a lot to go over i don't find that using any of these is helpful with the exception of ball carrier now in the first video i did a test where i tried to uh, run the ball 10 times with all three ball carrier types to find out if one was more explosive or if one had more fumbles and none of them had any fumbles so in my opinion if you're only running with a running back it really doesn't matter which one of these three you use but if you're running with a quarterback or any non-running back like a receiver or something like that you're typically going to want to have this set to conservative if you want to decrease your chances of fumbling. I typically put this on conservative every game because I'm a very conservative player when it comes to uh, you know not wanting to turn the ball over. Turnovers are huge. So limiting that in any way to me is a huge plus. That's typically what I use. But I also find that balance if you're only running with the, with the running back is a little bit better. And I'll show you guys why. If you're going to choose ball carry on balance, conservative, or aggressive, other than fumbling, the only thing that I really notice changes is the type of animations you get when it comes to juking or when it comes to spinning. Any type of ball carry animation is reduced significantly if you use conservative as your ball carrier. You'll notice that you can't do any of those things. You can still cut and plant pretty good, so it's not like you don't have elusive ability still. If you go to aggressive, you'll notice that there's a much, um, you know, just more animation when it comes to the actual uh, movement of the running back because he just looks a lot quicker and you're able to do a lot more so this is really up to you to decide but it really depends on how you like to play me personally i only really run with the running back but i also don't want fumbles so if i do take off with the quarterback i don't want to have to worry about it so to me i typically set my ball carry to conservative but i noticed a lot lately that i've been using ball carry on balance more because i really only run with the running back and i really want that ability to try to make bigger plays out of nothing next up i'll go over defensive coaching adjustments as this one here probably gives you the most benefits as in every gameplay i use i probably change every single one of these to something and if you're not changing these that might be the reason that you're struggling on defense the only ones that i don't change are probably zone drops and hooks other than that the only one that i use the least is probably auto flip defensive play call on and off i sometimes will turn it off if i want to do a blitz to a certain uh area of the field if you you'll notice that certain blitz plays like um you know outside edge blitzes you can't really change uh, pre-snap I can't flip the play unless I take that off if I take that off then I can flip the play and run it in either direction that I want so if there's a scenario where I want the blitzing cornerback to come off a certain side then I'll flip the play pre-snap which, like I said, if you try to do that after the play starts, a lot of times can uh, can have you in bad positions where you get caught out of position, out of alignment because you're trying to flip a play before your opponent hikes the ball. That's never a good idea. So that's really the only time that I'll use that. One that I use every single game, though, regardless of what defensive formation or what, regardless of what defensive scheme I'm using, is I will always set auto alignment to base. In last year's Madden, and I still somewhat believe this, having auto alignment set to default is not a horrible option because if you're running like a cover two man, if I have it set to default, you notice how these cornerbacks are right down the receiver's face. It's their job to jam and try to press the receiver and alter the route and kind of disrupt it and get in the way and all that stuff. That's what the strength of cover two man is. So if I change it to base, it'll basically take that away. As you'll see now, the cover two man cornerbacks uh, are too far away to do those pressing animations. In fact, they're they're a lot of times not even in position uh, to to you know make a play. As you can see right here, Slay is so far away from this tight end. If he runs across the field, he's way out of position. Now, with that being said, I still recommend setting this to base. 
And that's because I don't typically run man coverages. I typically run a lot of uh, zone coverages. I run some man zero, but for the most part, I have a mixture of zone coverages. And zone coverages pretty much recover. Whether you're running cover three, cover two, cover four, it'll always come out in a cover four shell. And I still find that they can get to their zone assignments quickly enough with no problems. Because I do think that it's beneficial to hide your coverages pre-snap against high-level players, which is probably the most important thing. Now, next up, we got ball in the air defense. This is probably one of the biggest changes I'm going to make as far as the suggestion from this video to the first video that I put out. And that's how I play ball in the air defense. I used to say play ball because I want more interceptions. And you still will get more interceptions if you have ball in the air defense set to this. But at the end of the day, you have to think about who's typically getting the most interceptions. If it's you as a user, this doesn't make sense. And typically for me, that's who it is. I'm either jumping routes with my user middle linebacker or safety, or if the ball's in the air, I'll usually click on and have time to, to set myself up in position to make the play myself. If you play like the defensive line or something like that, and you don't like to click on, you're probably going to want to play ball for more interceptions. But if you do play more actively as, as a zone defender or as a, a coverage defender, I think play receivers best. Or at least when you play receiver, your, your defenders will go to get more knockouts. And if you think in terms of quick throws uh, within 10 yards, say, um, you know, over the middle or to the outside where you really don't have a lot of time to click on them and make a play on the ball anyway, um, in short throws and short passing game, playing receiver will give you a better opportunity to get more knockouts from the computer, which is going to be a better benefit. Now, next up, we got cornerback matchups. I pretty much always set this to buy overall, uh, how I have it set in my, uh, you know, my depth chart, which is the same thing if you go by depth chart too, which is all the way at the end here. But I typically go by overall because I want my best cornerback facing their best receiver. Now, if there's a huge speed disadvantage between my best cornerback and their best receiver, I'll go to buy speed. I don't typically mess with buy height, but that's something if you have a six foot three cornerback and they have a six foot five receiver, you can switch it to buy height. Those are the only three options that I suggest. Um, but that's pretty much it. Because if you go by speed, you know, say you're getting cooked on streaks by Tyreek Hill. If you go by speed, that's not necessarily going to fix that uh, when it comes to shorter routes. You know, it might help with over the top. But if you have a, you know, a lower rated, faster cornerback matched up with Tyreek Hill, he's going to get cooked everywhere else over the field. So to me, I go by with buy overall until I see a, a, a point that it's not sustainable, which typically doesn't happen because, you know, you're, even with Tyreek Hill, you're not necessarily going to get cooked over the top as long as you're playing a coverage that's off enough that they have a bit of a cushion. Next up, we have option defense. There's no real conversation to be had here. Set it to conservative. Focus on the quarterback. Because if you don't, if you leave it up to the computer in balance, sometimes they'll just focus on the quarterback and sometimes they'll just let them run for huge gains. Having that happen one time is enough for you to realize that conservative is the way to go. Because even on aggressive or on conservative, the running back doesn't become a better that much of a better option anyway. Now, these next two are pretty similar. Strip ball and tackling. They're both aimed at getting more fumbles. You can't really go aggressive when it comes to strip ball, but you can go aggressive when it comes to tackling. And I'll show you why. If you go aggressive on strip ball, number one, I notice you don't really get a ton of more fumbles anyway, but you will get a lot of face mask penalties. So typically I like to leave this at conservative because I want to lower my broken tackle chances, uh, which like I said, the only real downside is the AI won't attempt to strip, but they don't really work anyway. So to me, it's best to have tackling on aggressive because this will make your AI defenders go for more hit sticks, which is an attempt at getting a fumble, but it will also increase your chances of broken tackles and fake outs where this will lower your chances of broken tackle and fake outs so to me that kind of off you know offsets one another and i still have the added benefit of the defenders trying to go for fumbles last but not least we have zone coverage and zone drops I'm going to go over zone coverage first because you can't really use these all together. I can't set my zone coverage to match and have my zone flats and my curl flats working at the same time. They cancel each other out. So you can't, you know, do something like this and expect it to match and give you the curl flat depths. It doesn't work that way. So it's really up to you which one you think is more important. But at the beginning of every gameplay, I pretty much always set my flats to five and my curl flats to 15. Flats to five will take away drag routes, take away, you know, five yard out routes, in routes, whatever, uh, take away flat routes. It's really best for those type of depths, uh, which is a route that's pretty much always going to be your check down, depending on what your opponent is doing. So to me, flats to five is important. Curl flats to 15 is good for slants. It's good for, um, you know, crossing routes. Sometimes if they're running deeper crosses, I might have to change this to 20, but I run it at 15 all year and I really haven't had to do that more than a handful of times. So that to me is the best setup. I said earlier in the video that I don't really set my zone drop hooks 
This is because hooks don't really follow. They're kind of trash. So to me, I typically just put these guys, if I have zone hooks on the field, I'll man them to somebody, especially in cover three, manning them to the receiver that's most likely to go up the seam. And I'm covering the middle of the field anyway, so I always feel more comfortable just manning my zone hooks to somebody else and let me cover the middle of the field alone because they don't really help out. Uh, after that, we have zone coverage match. This, like I said, it only really works. I set it on, but it only really works if you take these off. So if you're gonna run match, on a specific play, which I will do from time to time, I'll take these off and then I'll just run it to match. You'll notice the difference between a cover three regular, which isn't a match, which you'll see like dark purple uh, curl flats compared to light purple curl flats, which is a, um, that's a match in cover three. So cover four quarters should be obvious to people that don't know. Uh, light purple, once again, we have a matching cover four where I probably have to leave the formation altogether and go over to dollar. As you can see right there, we have the regular cover four. That's non-matching. So this will only help in plays like that. There is one more, which is going to be the cover two drop. As you can see here, they have light purple compared to or light blue compared to dark blue. The light blue zones are once again matching zones. So I'm going to end the video there. If you guys want to see me do updates, continue to do update videos like this as the game changes or as I find new coaching adjustments that work better. Uh, more specifically, as uh, EA updates the game, a lot of times it's going to change make sure to be a subscriber hit the like button let me know in the comment section if you have a coaching adjustment that you think works better than the one i suggested let me know in the comment section as well other than that i'll have the video from the original coaching adjustments video popping up on screen as i go more in depth with a lot of these uh, based on the fact that that was like the first one i put out year and i typically like to go more in depth into that video uh check that out by clicking the link and that's it thanks for watching man my shit out need more help or just want to show your support then head over to my patreon and join my team where you can get exclusive content like ebooks and bonus plays as well as early access to my vids and more link in the description below